Hello, welcome back to the lecture series on multivariate calculus integration. Now, in the last lecture, we had been discussing how to evaluate double integrals. And we have told that this is done essentially by evaluating repeated single integrals. Now, let us recapitulate for a moment. We had seen how to do that for a rectangular region in the last class. So, if we have a rectangular region like this, where x varies from a to b and y varies from c to d, then the Fobinus theorem tells that the double integral fxy dx dy over r may be evaluated like this, where we actually evaluate two single integrals. And primarily what is done is we look into the limits of x and y such that the region R is covered. So see that as x was varying from A to B that has been taken over here and y varies from C to D. So the limits of y has been taken care over here. And now we evaluate this inner integral first, which is only with respect to x. So therefore we evaluate a single integral with respect to x. And at this moment, I hope you remember that y should be treated as a constant. And once we evaluate the integral, your answer will be a function of y, which is then integrated again with respect to y from c to d. Otherwise, we could have also done in the reverse way, we could have written the y first. So we could have evaluated the integral with respect to y first and then with respect to x. Okay, now with this idea, we will now proceed to see what we can do for non-rectangular regions or otherwise that we have any arbitrary region. Now, this arbitrary region uh, that is usually we classify into two types. The first one what we will see is actually called the type 1 region. So, suppose that we have a region like this which is of course non-rectangular but we can identify the boundaries like this that the domain omega is now bounded by this lower curve y equal to phi 1x and the upper curve y equal to phi 2x and this side it's the x equal to a and on the right it is the x equal to b so that is what we have written over here so this type 1 region omega is consisting of the points x y where x varies from a to b and y varies from phi 1x to phi 2x where phi 1x and phi 2x are continuous functions on AB. So if we have a region like this then Fubini's theorem tells that the double integral fxy dx dy over omega can be evaluated in this fashion. Now what is this? Let us look into this carefully. Now once again the idea is we have to find the limits of x and y in such a way that the total region omega is covered. So what we do is first we vary y. Now we see in the figure as we have already discussed that y is varying from this lower curve phi 1x to the upper curve phi 2x. Essentially we can think that we are taking a vertical strip like this where y is varying from phi 1x to phi 2x and we will do this integration again treated as a single variable integration with respect to y and at this moment obviously x will be treated as a constant. Once we are over with this integration we see that our answer will be again a function of x and now again we will integrate with respect to x from a to b. Why a to b? Come back to the figure. See that we had taken a vertical strip which was varying from phi 1x to phi 2x. And now if we vary this strip from the leftmost point covering the region, that is from x equal to a to x equal to b, we will cover up the whole region. So that is the idea behind that we have to find the limits of x and y such that the entire domain omega is covered. And so the double integral fxy dx dy may be evaluated in this fashion. First, we will evaluate the inner integral fxy dy 
where y is varying from phi 1 x to phi 2 x and next we will integrate with respect to x from a to b. So, to help us understand this better, let us take examples now. So, now I have a problem for you. Calculate the integral x plus y dx dy over the region R and what is R? R is a region which is bounded by the lines x equal to 0, y equal to 0, x plus y equal to 2. Now, one thing when you do this kind of problems, the first and foremost thing what you should do is to draw the region R. Mind it, we have to draw the region. Otherwise, we won't be able to identify the limits of x and y properly. So, let us see how this region will look like. Now, see here, x equal to 0, we know it's the y-axis. y equal to 0 is the x-axis. And the third boundary is x plus y equal to 2. So, this is drawn over here. I hope everybody can draw it. And x plus y equal to 2, this straight line is obviously cut the x-axis at the point 2, 0 and the y-axis at the point 0, 2. So, our region R is essentially this one marked in blue, which has been bounded by the three lines x equal to 0, y equal to 0 and x plus y equal to 2. And now, what do we do then? So, as we have represented earlier, in that language, we can now write this R as the set of points x, y, where x is varying from 0 to 2 and y is varying from 0 to 2 minus x. Why is it so? Let us understand this once again. Now, see, if we look into this region for finding the limits of x and y, see that what is the lower curve over here? or the phi 1x as for our notation. The lower curve over here is this x-axis, which is obviously y equal to 0, and the upper curve. So, if we would have taken a vertical strip, see that it starts from y equal to 0 and ends at this straight line x plus y equal to 2. So, y is varying from 0 to 2 minus x. And x is varying from of course, the y-axis, so x equal to 0, to this maximum point, x equal to 2. So, I hope our region is clear with all. I repeat that for this kind of problems, the most important thing is you should draw the figure correctly. Then only we can find the limits of x and y. So, now what do we do with our integral? Now, the task is actually very easy. So, the given integral x plus y dx dy over the region r is written like this x plus y. Uh, now we have just changed it to dy dx. The reason is we are first integrating with respect to y. Our inner integral will be respect to y. And what are the limits of y as we have just now discussed? y is varying from 0 to 2 minus x. This is what we have in the inner integral. And the outer integral is with respect to x where x varies from 0 to 2. So, now the task is pretty easy because ultimately we are going to do single variable integration which I am sure everybody can do it. So, let us look into the inner integral. What do we get? It's x dy but now one thing we have to remember we are integrating with respect to y. So, for this moment x is a constant. So, as we integrate this expression x plus y dy we get xy plus y dy so it gives us y square by 2. Our limits are from 0 to 2 minus x. So, uh, as you put the limits, we will get x multiplied with 2 minus x plus 2 minus x whole square by 2. And the lower limit, the expression is 0. Now, I have just simplified this expression over here, which you can do it easily. And once you simplify this expression, we get 2 minus x square by 2 as our integrant now which will be integrated with respect to x from 0 to 2. So, as we integrate, we get 2x minus x cubed by 6. Put the limit 0 to 2, we get the answer 8 by 3. So, I hope the problem is clear. 
So once again, we have taken this as a type 1 region. So our y is varying from the lower curve, this x-axis y equal to 0 and going up to this curve or the straight line rather x plus y equal to 2. So we have taken y as 2 minus x. And now as we vary this vertical strip from the left corner x equal to 0 to the rightmost corner x equal to 2. So this is the main task which you have to essentially do. Okay. So let us look into another problem of this kind. So calculate the double integral x minus y dx dy over the region R, where R is the region bounded by x equal to 0, x equal to 1, y equal to x, y equal to 2 minus x square. So now the region is bounded by three straight lines, x equal to 0, x equal to 1, y equal to x and y equal to 2 minus x squared. What is this? This is a parabola, right? So let us once again look into the figure. So x equal to 0, that is our y-axis. It's here. x equal to 1. What is that? x equal to 1 is this straight line, right? A straight line parallel to the y-axis. x equal to 1 is this straight line. y equal to x, it's here. We all know it passes through the origin. And y equal to 2 minus x square is this inverted parabola. Okay. So let us now look carefully. So what is the region? Our region is bounded by this y axis x equal to 1. Now x equal to 1 is just essentially this line. So it's not actually uh, giving any region rather. It's just cutting the other curves at this point x equal to 1, y equal to 1. And y equal to x is this straight line and this we have the parabola. So essentially we have this region bounded by the three curves basically. Okay, so this is our region and then how do I write the region R? Let us see. So our lower curve as we see if we take a vertical strip as I already explained and see the lower curve and the upper curve, the lower curve over here is y equal to x and the upper curve over here is the parabola 2 minus x squared. So you see that is what we have written down here to represent the region R that y is varying from x to 2 minus x squared. And what about x? The minimum value of x is of course lying on the y axis that is x equal to 0 and the maximum value is as you see we had a line also here x equal to 1 so it is x equal to 1 and obviously you can easily check that this point of intersection is 1 1 you can easily check that this point is lying on all the three curves rather all the <coughs> yes all the three curves y equal to x y equal to 2 minus x square and x equal to 1 okay so if we have understood this we can now start finding the integral. So x minus y dx dy. Now once again we will first integrate with respect to y and the limits of y are as I just now explained y is varying from x to 2 minus x square and afterwards the outer integral will be with respect to x where x is varying from 0 to 1. This is what again depicted here. So now we will just need to evaluate the integrals. So we just evaluate the integrals now one by one. We have now done the inner integral separately and then we will put it in the outer one. So the inner integral, if you remember from the previous slide, this was x minus y dy and our limits were from x to 2 minus x squared. So as I integrate, once again, we remember that x is a constant. So as I integrate x minus y dy, the first term is xy minus it's y dy so y square by 2 put the limits from y equal to x to 2 minus x square so as i put the limits we will get this x into 2 minus x square minus 2 minus x square whole square by 2 minus now i put the lower limits so it's x square minus x square by 2 now we have to just do a little bit of simplification and we are going to get this expression 
and next what is left so once we have computed the inner integral this becomes the integrand for the outer integral so we put it here and integrate with respect to x from 0 to 1 so as we integrate i'm sure everybody can do it but just for a while let me say so it's x4 so it will give you x5 by 10 with a minus sign over here minus x4 by 4 plus x cube by 2 plus x square minus 2x put the limits from 0 to 1 and if you do the calculations you will get minus 17 by 20. So we get the value of our integral. So that's all for today. In the next lecture session we will go for the other type of region which will be called as type 2 region. So goodbye till then and thank you.